Just like a broken record, same old songs of accusation play. Like who are you to speak the truth? Just look at all your failures and mistakes. And if they really knew you, there's no way they could love you anyway. Oh, oh, oh but I will fight the lies with the truth. Hello, and welcome to the Send Help Podcast, a podcast on a lifeline for moms who are stuck in the trenches of mommyhood, bringing them encouragement through Jesus, laughter, and sisterhood. sisterhood. <laughs> you I thought I might feel less awkward if I just said it with you. You should. Instead of saying Let's start it doing after. It that way. Let's start doing it that way. Ready? One, two, three. Sisterhood. sisterhood. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, we left you guys prophesying to your giants. Yes. And man, have some things shifted. Yes. (laughs) So I think it's amazing because, you know, (laughs) a lot of people got married before I did. Yeah. That whole 17 dresses thing was almost 17. Is it 17? No, wasn't it 20? I don't know. 25? But you know, 20. movie, there's a movie and there's a 27, number of 27, dresses. 27, 27, 27, 27 dresses. dresses. Yes. <laughs> um, that was your life. That was my life. Mm-hmm. That was almost a reality for me. I think I was hitting the double digits. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I was that person. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I came to a point in my life right before I turned 30, literally right before I turned 30, I quit my job, moved back in with my parents to go back to school to start being obedient to what I felt like God wanted for my life, Mm -hmm. which I'm starting to think that that whole move was just about being obedient and not about the actual degree or... Yes. Yeah. (laughs) So thank you, God, for allowing me to spend... $20,000 Twenty thirty thousand dollars to learn how to be obedient. obedient. <laughs> <laughs> but with those decisions, obedient and with clout. being obedient, right? <laughs> being obedient, I got into a job position that really. Um, uh, What is the word that I'm looking for? The only word that I can think of is fostered, but that I don't know that that's really, it's similar to what I'm thinking, but it's not the exact word that I'm thinking of, but. Okay, well, finish your sentence and I'll tell you uh, if something comes to my mind. Right? <laughs> so I, I ended up in a job position that really, like, those people encouraged me. They knew who I was. They, uh, even though it seemed like, I would not be physically or mentally capable of doing that job. Like they never showed any doubt at all that I could do the job and be extremely successful in it. They actually gave me a lot more than I thought I could do. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of like God does with us. Yeah. But, uh, I had such confidence and I was living so freely in that, Whatever, God, let's do it. You just were nurtured. throw it at me. Nurtured. Yeah, yes. yes, nurtured. Yes. That's the word I was going for. <laughs> nurtured. Like they really nurtured those things in me. And I just became more and more confident in, all right, God, if this is where you want me, then yeah, let's do this. And just the confidence of where I thought I was supposed to be and the thing being scary and then doing it. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, there was a lot of water on my wood. Yeah. Before I quit my job and I had just bought a car because mine went kaput. And so I had a car payment and I had, you know, responsibilities. I couldn't just quit my job and not have one. Yeah. So the whole, okay, God, let's do this and trusting it, like completely trusting it 
And then in that time period, you know, I get my master's degree. I'm in a job that I love and I meet Dusty. All like all of these things just suddenly started falling into place completely. Six months later, married. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Literally falling into place. Yeah. Um, it's been a while since I felt that confident in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Switching from that into motherhood was, you know, <laughs> it's fine. And I'm slowly working my way back. But everything that we talked about the last two weeks, mm -hmm. that's kind of what it reminds me of. Yeah. Of being in that place where your wood has been flooded, but you're saying, come on, let's do this. Yeah. Bring down fire from Bring heaven. down fire from heaven. And and then he does in so many different ways at that time. Yeah. And I mean, did he ever bring down fire from heaven? <laughs> yes, he did. It just didn't look the same. It wasn't literal fire, but we weren't right. asking for if literal fire. If it were fire. literal fire, I don't think we could, would consider it from God as a blessing in our lives, we would be screaming right. in terror. <laughs> if we had needed literal <laughs> fire from heaven, I don't doubt that God would still do it, but it, we're not asking for those bold moves of literal fire from heaven. We're asking for bold moves of like literal, like, you know, in your case, you're like, okay, I'm stepping out in faith. I'm going to do this, this, and this. And then God met every one of your needs and exceeded your expectations because yep. then he brought Dusty. Right. <laughs> and then I stopped needing anything because I just make Dusty do everything. <laughs> so it worked out. <clears throat> and it all clicked just now for Dusty. And he's like, ah, I see what just happened. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's why she stopped thinking about anything ever. This is why she can't remember anything. Yeah. <laughs> she doesn't have to. It's true, though. Well, in the last... So we recorded those back-to-back -back on the same day. And then we haven't been together for a week because I had my... Right. Um, my Tim's whole family came down. Um, well, except for his brother, he was still in Minnesota and we missed him terribly, but, Patrick. um, Patrick, yes. But my sister-in-law and my newest brother-in-law, um, and my amazing mother-in-law came down and they spent uh, like eight or 10 days. I can't remember. <clears throat> It wasn't long enough. I mean, eight, ten. Yeah. I don't, it, maybe it was eight. I don't know. Um, it wasn't long enough, but I was really working through all the things that we talked about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there were a lot of tears. Um, I've been struggling with this stupid heart monitor. I hate it. Yeah. Um, I have to wear it until the seventh. Uh, then I had an echocardiogram last Monday. So this is okay. This is where our story starts. <laughs> and what I, what is so amazing is I really feel like something, even though, so my mother-in-law and I have a really beautiful relationship and I crave time with her when she's here because, um, I feel like she really sees me and, mm -hmm. We get to pray together and um, we talk about spiritual stuff and I always feel encouraged and she feels encouraged and we feel like something, like something in the spirit changes when we're around each other. Um, but only if we get time to talk. Right. <laughs> and we didn't get that this time. And we both talked about how we didn't get it. And we even tried praying together a couple of times, but then somebody would show up at the door or walk in or just we'd get interrupted. And it just didn't come together. Um, and then I had to work and it was just, we were trying to fit yeah. a lot in yeah. during one week. And it felt really kind of crushing at times because especially during this time, 
I was really trying to process all of this. And I was like, I was really counting on when Joanne gets here, I'm going to be able to talk about this. Right. Um, when she gets here, I'm going to show her all of these buckets of water that yeah. have poured onto my firewood. Exactly. <laughs> and she's going to walk me through this. I'm going to tell her everything. We're going to pray together and something huge is going to change. You know, like that's, yeah. that's what I really thought was going to happen. And um, we didn't get that time. The only time we really spent together, we went to Central Market for like one hour. <laughs> and that was it. I introduced her to pumpkin butter. Mm. Um, I think I changed her life. You know, do they not have that? She's never had it. She's never had it. Oh. I know it was amazing. Anyway, it was life changing for her. Um, I hope that she's laughing right now. Um, anyway, we both were kind of bummed out about it. She is coming back in December and um, or July, not July, January. <laughs> And it's either this winter or next summer. <laughs> no, it's it's after Christmas. <laughs> I should have just said after Christmas. There you go. <laughs> that encompasses all of next yes. year. Yes. Anyway, I really like after she left, something started happening in my spirit. So I feel like even just being around each other and something started shifting for her too. Something the Lord still still did something, even though <laughs> Even though it was just, we didn't really get yeah. what we both thought we needed. Um, but it was clear that the Lord was already doing something because I was really starting to make some statements, some big, bold statements, and starting to really prophesy to the giants and saying, no, Mountain, you're going to move. This is what's going to happen. Yeah, You're not going to stay there anymore. <laughs> we're, we're doing this. <laughs> we're going forward. Um, and then, so she left on Sunday. I had my echocardiogram on Monday. And while I was laying there, and this is really significant to me, while I was laying there, um, a lot of things are rushing through my mind. <laughs> but I'm watching the screen. And it's really cool watching your own heart on a screen because, you know, really the only sonograms that I've really paid attention to have been baby sonograms. Yeah. And... um I'm watching the screen and I'm watching my own heart and I'm talking to the Lord because it, this is a long and because of the size of my chest, it was taking a very long time to get the picture that they wanted. And so it felt more like a mammogram <laughs> than anything. So I was really trying to just focus on the Lord because mm -hmm. this was not a comfortable experience. So right. I was watching the screen and talking to God and then they have to put, had to put an IV in because they couldn't get a good enough picture. So they needed to put contrast in. Well, I'm kind of allergic to contrast. Um, it's not a really bad allergy, but it's enough to make it burn. Right. And then I get hives. And, um, so I have to take Benadryl right afterwards. Um, and during, and <laughs> it's super fun, but so <laughs> I'm sitting there and he turns on the the colors. So they when they flip on the screen, they they do a color like a color picture. I don't know what it's called. It's like a color vector over over the screen. Vector is probably totally BS, and I'm <laughs> probably just making up words. But there's a red and a blue flashing. And that is your um, your blood rushing in and rushing out. It's showing the directions <coughs> of the blood in your heart. But in the middle, in the center, is like this little tornado Ooh. of orange and white. And it's like just this tornado flicker. <laughs> and all I could think was, oh my gosh, it looks like fire. And then as they're pushing the contrast into my veins, <laughs> I feel like it's Your body literally fire. on fire. And I watched it hit my heart and my whole heart turned white. And then I just watched, I just watched that, like that little tornado of fire, because I guess, I guess that the colors, you can't see red and blue. It's just orange. It looks like a little tornado of fire in the center of the red and the blue because it's, that's where it's whooshing. Yeah. So I don't think that it, it's, it must not be, 
it must be going so fast that it's not showing exactly the the direction. I don't know. That's probably BS also. But <laughs> I was talking to the Lord and I was just like, Lord, I mean, that looks like fire. And all I could think of was Jeremiah 20 verse 9. Actually, I have it written down right here. <laughs> but if I say I will not mention him or speak any more in his name, his word is in my heart like a fire, a fire shut up in my bones. I am weary from holding it in. Indeed, I cannot. So I've always remembered that verse as a fire shut up in my veins. And so while they're pushing this contrast and I'm watching this fire, this literal fire of blood rushing in my heart, I'm asking, my, I'm like, Lord, what I need right now <laughs> is I want your, I want Holy Spirit, I want your fire. I need a transfusion of the Holy Spirit's fire in my veins. Like I want that to be your fire in my heart. And that's all I could think of was that verse over and over and over again. So I'm just sitting there on the table, like the guy's talking to me. I have no idea what he's talking about. My dad's <laughs> in the corner. And I'm just like, all I can think of is like the Lord, I just want, I've got a tear running down my face and I'm just like, Lord, I just, I want it. I want a transfusion of you. I want a transfusion of your fire, like your power, your fire, your passion. I want an all consuming fire to take over and burn out all impurities, all doubt because doubt had infected our family. Mm -hmm. Anytime we talked about a baby, anytime we talk about a house, just this, this look would come over anyone's face, except Josh. Joshua has faith like a child. Obviously, he right. is a child. Yeah. But he talks about baby Grace. I mean, y'all, he talks about baby Grace all day, all day, all the time, <laughs> all the time. And he talks about, well, we just got to get to the house. We just have to get the house. He's like, when are we going to get the house? You know, <laughs> I'm like, I don't know, buddy. I don't know. I don't know. You know, and I, I'm just like, how am I discouraging? I'm discouraging him right. with my lack of faith. And I cannot do that. <laughs> because faith in God will never fail. Like, you should never be weary in your faith and your in God because right. God is never going to fail you. He's always faithful. If you have faith in something else, hope in something else, hope. Let's okay, let's talk about hope because hope is really where I was having a hard a hard time. Faith not so much. I have faith in the Lord, but hope I did not have anymore. I had hope I was hoping for a baby. I was I had hope in my body. I had hope in the adoption agency. I had hope in the state of Texas, the government. I had hope in the the market, the real estate market to come down. I had hope in our realtors. I had hope in every I mean, I had hope in God, but I was looking to everything else going, but it doesn't look good. Like, okay, Lord, I know you can do whatever you want to do, but it doesn't look good. Right. Okay, God, but, okay, God, but, I know you can do this, God, but my hope needed to be completely in him. And that's what I was asking him for. I wanted this fire because what does fire do? It purifies, it burns up impurities. I wanted to burn up the impurities of doubt because doubt is just calling God a liar. I'm not going to call God a liar. No way, dude. No way. So I started um, that day. So then I went to, to breakfast with my dad, telling him all the things on my heart, telling him about, you know, well, we have to do this. And I don't know if we're ever going to find a house and I don't know if we're ever going to do this. I haven't looked at a house in months because you know, what's the point, right? James calls. That's my realtor. He's like, Hey, we need to go look at a house. Can you go see a house? And I was like, yeah, weird. Okay. So I leave from there to go look at a house. And then in the next three days, I go through 
10 houses. <laughs> and uh, that's insane. It is. That's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot of houses right there in a short period of time, especially because you haven't looked in a while. No. I, um, every day I was like, okay, Lord, these houses are really awful. <laughs> right. But I'm not going to say no to looking at any of these. I'm not going to say no because you could surprise me, Lord. You could surprise me. I'm going to continue to say yes, and I'm going to continue to step out, and I'm going to continue to not doubt you. So every time <laughs> I say yes, we go. We all get full on discouraged because we're all like, oh, <laughs> this is a really gross house. Or we're like, well, I mean, we can make this work. We can, mm, we <laughs> could put some work in it's okay <laughs> you know we could add on in 10 years right you know i mean we could eventually replace this paneling right in linoleum if he crawled through this room it the ceiling would be tall enough yeah you know, for the next five years it might be okay it's six and a half foot ceiling it'll be, it's okay he'll be fine he'll until be fine. he's 18 yeah i mean like maybe 16 these <laughs> these are these are the the conversations that we're having but i i think like i don't know i was just like no i'm not i refuse to doubt we are not going to doubt and tim and i had this conversation i was like we're leaving doubt at the door it does not get to come in the house period leave it at the door just like just like when we were all in quarantine how we would strip down to the lysol bath you know, shoes off at right. the door. You know, like we're putting them in this bucket. They don't get to come in. Yeah. We're doing that with doubt. Doesn't get to come in. And every day we're praying. Every day we're prophesying that we are doing, God is doing something. He, we are going to find the house, but we <laughs> have no idea what he was doing. So then I'm at, I'm at work on Friday. See, I, lo I love this because <laughs> everything that you're saying <laughs> is like the <laughs> definition of faith. Yeah. <laughs> Hebrews 11, one, like it is the definition of everything that you are talking through is literally the definition of faith. The substance of things hoped for <laughs> the evidence of things not seen. <laughs> it's literally the definition of faith. Oh, y'all Friday. I'm they just, call me. I know. They call me. They're like, Amanda, we have to go look at a house today. And I was like, okay. Do you want to look at it? Or you want me to just make the appointment? I was like, just make the appointment. I'll go. So he was like, okay, I'm going to send you the information on this house. <laughs> he sends me the information on this house. Y'all, this house is a house that was on the market previously that I loved. I showed it to Tim. He shot it down because it was too expensive. <laughs> it had sold. A contract right. was on it. It was not an option anymore. It had gone for way over asking. Eight offers on the table. <laughs> way out of reach. An impossibility, if you will. Right. By all standards. Yes. <laughs> and we went. We walked through. It's in a dream neighborhood. It's on... 0.34 acres. It's, I mean, which is big backyard for living in the city. It's got all the climbing trees. It's got a little shed in the backyard that will one day be the Send Help podcast shed. <laughs> she shed. <laughs> it is really wonderful. It's really wonderful. It's It's everything... That we had hoped for. It checks all of your boxes. It checks all the boxes. Every single one. Except that it has gray walls. But gray walls look great in Christy's house. But it doesn't go with any of my stuff. That's okay though. It's just paint. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but y'all. Um, we put in an offer for asking price. And we stepped out in big faith because in like, so 
my parent, my dad went with me the first time. Then Tim went back the next morning. They checked everything out. It's in really great condition, has a pretty new roof, has a new AC unit. I mean, no huge red flags. So we put in a no option um, bid. So we meant business. Right. And that was huge faith because I'm like, oh my gosh. No backing out. Of no something backing you, out. If something yeah. pops up. Yeah. And you guys, so that was on, we put the bid in on, put our Sunday. offer in on Saturday. Saturday. Sunday, we had an incredible, incredible day at church. And people just kept coming up to us saying, this is your time. Like God is saying, this is your time. Like it's, he's bringing you to the forefront. Something is happening. Something is breaking. And we're just going, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all are all weirding me out a little bit. No, I'm just going, oh, okay. Just one person. And Tim's one person just looking at me. It would have been fine. And Tim's looking at me like, oh my gosh. So we're like, yeah, you guys, we put an offer in. We're just waiting. We're just waiting. And then we get a text saying, we'll find out. We could find out like they're going to meet at 530. So we're like, okay, we're praying. So we send out the bat signal for everybody to start praying. And like the, t the text that I send out says, we've thrown a ton of water yeah. on the altar and we are calling down fire from heaven. <laughs> and you guys, God lit the altar because they accepted our offer yes. yesterday. <laughs> and we're putting, we're giving our earnest money today. And oh my gosh, we're supposed to close on the 23rd of November, which means we will have, we'll be homeowners by Thanksgiving. Yes. Which means we'll have Christmas at our house. So exciting. It's insane. It's insane. That's what it's it is. Insane. It is insane. It's crazy. I it's just cannot believe logical it. logical and reasonable because you didn't do it. I know I didn't do it at all. But I did say, I have been saying for a year, Lord, make us two years. Let us be an example of miracles. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Let us be an example of miracles that people go, that was totally God because there's no way that that would have worked. Yeah. Our realtor even. <laughs> who has been giving me you the side have been eye telling your realtor god's gonna make it happen from the get-go yes and he's been giving me the side eye smirk okay okay we'll keep praying you know like keep praying okay That's not gonna happen he's like well why don't we look in burleson why don't we look in cleburne why right. don't we look you know like these are places that you might be able to find yeah. a place not Burleson, Cleburne, like he was pushing us to go to Godly or somewhere like that. Yeah. And I was like, no, we need Crowley. it in this tiny yeah. circle right here. He's like, okay, I don't, I mean, okay, just, I guess, keep praying, you know, but it was never. So yesterday he goes, as he was crying, he goes, it was just God's timing. Oh. And I go, did you just hear yourself? <laughs> You just said it was God's timing. <laughs> now, I know something can still go wrong. I do. My brother's being very careful to make sure that I keep my feet pl firmly planted on the ground, that we're not across the finish line yet. Right. There are still a couple things that we really need the Lord to come through on, but I don't believe that God has brought us this far to drop us. No. And if something does go wrong, and if we are not able to continue with this for some reason, like if something happens, then I believe that he has a better plan. Absolutely. And I'm standing firm in that. Because there's no point at this point to not feel that way. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't believe that it's going to happen like that. I really think that this is the one. But... It's still in his hands completely. I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I keep having, what's crazy is I'm the one that's having these breakdowns like of, oh my gosh, what's happening? What are we doing? Why are we doing this? Did I just make a huge, did I make this happen? Like, you know, I'm like, did I push us into right. this? You know, <laughs> like, did I just sell us up the river? Like, you know, I mean, did I really just, did I force everyone into this decision? Like, and Tim, you didn't force the homeowners into accepting the offer. No, I did not. I did not. <laughs> and Tim has been so full of peace. And it's been weirding me out. I'm like, are you sure? Are you sure? We talked to our loan officer last, last night for an hour until like 10 o'clock at night. And um, I had so many questions. And her name is Amanda also. And she's the pres- she's so precious. And she's just like, she's like, Oh, this is nothing. <laughs> you guys, the things that we have to work on, this is nothing. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, we this is nothing. We we got this. And I'm just like, she told us what the payment amount it was and um we got off the phone and I looked at Tim and I just burst into tears and I was like, Tim, can we even afford this? And like he was like, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know. Can we eat? You know. <laughs> But it's just, it. so what I've just been thinking of today, like I, I don't, I, I guess a month ago, a month ago. So you guys know I'm, I'm part of the global prophetic Alliance. And so there was a, there was a, a guy that was in one of the healing rooms when we were doing the prophetic, he, they were praying over me and over our family. And like they had, they knew the whole story and he sent me an email he's from scotland sent me an email and he was like the lord like i needed to find you because the lord gave me a verse and our room closed out before he could speak to me oh so he searched for me yeah out of the thousand members and found me <laughs> which is amazing so it must have been major like the lord really spoke to him but he gave me this verse um Y'all, God will seek you out when he has a word for you. Yeah, that's the truth. So get this. All right. The verse that he sent was 54 verse one through three. But he said emphasis on verse two. 54 two of of what? Oh, Isaiah. I'm sorry. (laughs) Isaiah. (laughs) I'll just read the whole thing, but no. Okay. So here's the emphasis. The emphasis place is enlarge the place of your tent, stretch your tent curtains wide. Do not hold back the lengthen your cords, strengthen your sta- stakes for you will spread out to the right and to the left. Your descendants will dis- dispossess the nations and settle their settle in their desolate cities. So two was what he felt like the Lord was really highlighting and it takes me back to when we talked about stretching mm-hmm. all those months ago and how like, cause yeah, last night I really was, I was really not okay. <laughs> and when I woke up this morning, the Lord was just like, you're going to be okay. But he brought this verse to mind and that we're supposed to not hold back and we're supposed to lengthen our cords and strengthen our stakes stretch out our tent curtains wide. So he is obviously he's he's enlarging our tent. That's what do you that's what he's doing. But he's also lengthening and he's stretching. And like those things are not comfy. No. <laughs> and if we were comfortable in like, oh yeah, no, we're totally this is gonna be no big deal. It's gonna be like mm. Just like exactly what we're paying right now. It's fine. Then that that wouldn't really be growing, would it? Mm-mm. No. My parents keep saying every time we moved, we had to stretch. Yep. And every time we stretched, we were able to meet the need. And we adjusted. They keep saying we adjusted. And the Lord is so faithful. He also reminded me, Today, because if you keep reading, he talks about how he, the, the, the 
for your maker is your husband. The Lord Almighty is his name. The Holy One of Israel is your redeemer. So like the Lord is our husband. As weird as you might think that is, that term is, the Lord is our husband. I mean, it says it all through scripture, yeah. but I mean, it is weird to hear, mm-hmm. but it's it's there all through scripture. It's just over and over in so many different ways. Right. And he reminded me of that because we have a very special relationship. And before I was married to Tim, I really had given my heart completely to the Lord. And I was like, if you're my only husband that I ever have, I'll be okay. Like I had taken that step of obedience and given, I just given it all to him and said, I'm just yours. And he's like, Hey, remember I'm your husband. Mm -hmm. I gave you Tim and I gave Tim you, but I'm still both of your husband. I am your husband. I wouldn't move you to a home that I can't afford. Right. That I can't afford. We don't know what God's going to do. Exactly. We have no idea. (laughs) He's doing something big. He brought the fire. He did. And he, he gave me a transfusion of the Holy Spirit's fire. And he's burning up the impurities of doubt. He's literally enlarging your tent. Yes. He's in literally literal doing terms. I know. Y'all, like hold on to terms. your hat cuz I feel like it's 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 all coming fast. Like Tim keeps kept he has been saying for the last year, when it all happens it's going to happen really fast. Mm-hmm. You said it. When it happens it's going to happen fast. I don't know. You did. You said it's going to happen fast. People keep saying it's going to happen fast. When it happens, it's going to happen fast. It's all going to happen all at once. And I'm like, right now, I'm like, whoa, whoa. (laughs) This is going to happen fast. Mm -hmm. I just have to get ready. Get ready. Because it's going to happen. Like, we're going to have to move. Like, (laughs) we're going (laughs) to. No, I have to pack everything. Yeah. But I want an all-consuming fire. So what? So we we kept we went into a spontaneous song of um, light a fire down in my soul that I can't contain and I can't control. I want more of you, God. I want more of you, God. So we just went into that into like, spontaneously. It was not planned for our worship on Sunday, and it was incredible. And then. At the end, we did. He did an altar call. If we wanted more of the Lord, and if we wanted Him to consume us, like with His, if the just Holy Spirit, just God's all-consuming fire, and then we all just broke out into that song <laughs> at the altar. It was incredible. The whole church. It was awesome. And I was listening to it this morning, and like I want, I want more of Him. So you guys, I encourage you. To let God not only be this little light of mine, but let him take you so that you right. are an all-consuming fire. What is so cool, Right. Justin was talking about, he was obviously, he was talking about fire on Sunday because we ended up in fire, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> but he was, he said, you know, f- fire doesn't have to advertise. <laughs> if something's on fire, people are going to stop and look. It's true. <laughs> If the car's on fire on the side of the road, everybody's going to be slowing down and looking at it. If you're on fire for God, people will come and watch you burn. So. That's good. Yeah. And I didn't say that. Neither did he. It's, it's a somebody, somebody famous said it. Oh, I don't know. I don't (laughs) know. That famous person one of the, that neither of us can remember. One of, one of the old guys. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> like Charles Spurgeon or something like that. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe not Spurgeon. But, you know, one, one of, of those old guys. The contemporaries of that yeah. age. Yeah. <laughs> one of the guys that is no longer with us. <laughs> They're not as Baptist as we think they are. But it's true, though, you guys. <laughs> like, let's. Let's invite him yeah. to light us on fire. We ask him to fan us and the fan the flame in our heart all the time. But let's ask for an all-consuming fire right. that that does burn up that doubt, that burns up 
those impurities, those just all of the things that we get bogged down in that are not of him. Mm -hmm. So that we don't have to think them up and conjure them up and be like, oh, what else is it? What else is it? What else is it? What else am I not doing right? That if we ask him and his fire to come and just cleanse us from the inside for that transfusion of his his fire in our veins that he'll bring them to the surface. Right. You don't have to dig them up. Right. He will bring them to the surface. This morning I spent a long time with Tim just he was late to work. A long time with Tim <laughs> just Repenting for doubt, repenting for disbelief, repenting for um, freaking out and not just immediately going to the Lord. Last night, we didn't pray together last night. We prayed together this morning. (laughs) We talked it through and I fell asleep last night. But this morning, I was like, we've got to pray again. Man, if we had just been doing this all along, I mean, but it was God's timing. But if we had been doing this all along, though, you know, how much stronger could we have been? Well, and that's, you know, one of the things about the stretching out the cords, strengthen your stake. Mm -hmm. Like I love the fact that it says strengthening your stakes because your stakes have to be really in the ground. If your stake is not firmly planted, then those cords are just going to pull it out. They're going to go back to where they were. Pop like a... Yeah. 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 Rubber band. And I think that over the last couple of years, there's been a lot of strengthening Mm -hmm. happening in y'all's stakes Mm -hmm. in order for the stretch to happen. And both of the stakes have to be strengthened. Yeah. Because one... And I feel like that has happened also because there's been an uneven... Like the stakes have been of unevenly... Right. In the ground, one of us one of is them pops out, and the, the other flies yeah. away while that one stake the other is, one holding is just on. holding on. And then you get it put back in, and then the other one pops out for yeah. a while. Yeah. And the tent's just blowing around in the air. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> the sweet little Josh is just inside. He's just inside, <laughs> flying around. <laughs> well, mom, what's happening, Dad? This is so cool. No. His little stake no. is firmly planted. You know? <laughs> he's, there are probably times that he's the one holding his stake in the ground like, come on, guys. <laughs> pull it together. I know. I know. <laughs> I know I'm the only child to have faith like a child, but come on. <laughs> I know. I know it. <laughs> Why can't you just believe what he said? It's really easy, guys. <laughs> exactly. He's like, well, God said it. <laughs> like, it's just amazing. It's amazing when a kid tells you, like, I just sat yeah. back. I just sat back. And sometimes I just sit back and glean from Josh. Right. I mean, it's not like he's, like, studying the scriptures. No, but, but he it's is just a like, perfect example of yeah. faith, childlike faith. Yeah. In believing something because you believe the person telling it to you. Yeah. He just goes, well, God said he it. He knows that God is true. Mm-hmm. So if God said it, then okay. He needs no explanation. That's that's the purity of the childlike faith is not needing the explanation behind it, not needing to know the why or the how behind it. God said it, so it's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And we... You become an adult and you're the one that's supposed to make it happen and you lose that because you don't see, I don't know how I'm going to make this happen. It can't be done. And we lose the, no, it's going to be done because God said it was and I believe him. Yeah. We exactly, but you know what? It's in your statement. We become an adult and we're the ones that are supposed to make it happen. Right. But yeah, that's the thing is we're not the ones that are supposed to make it happen. Right. We think we're supposed to make it happen. Right. 
God's the one that's supposed to make it happen. We make dinner, we get them dressed, like we do all of the physical things throughout the day and it just becomes in our head Mm -hmm. that we're the ones that are supposed to make the thing happen. We have to do it. Yeah. Yeah. We forget that we're still the child. Right. And he's the father. Yep. Dude. Anyway, thanks for listening. (laughs) I love it. I expect a Hallmark Christmas party in your house. Oh, for sure. Um, Yes, I definitely would love for you guys to join us in prayer over this miracle on Oak Tree Circle. Yes. Um, And whatever, whatever the fire is that you are waiting to come down from heaven, let us know so that we can stand in prayer with you on that. Yeah. Seriously. You need some jugs of water? I got them. I got them. That sounds counterproductive, but we will wet down that wood. Yes, <laughs> we will throw it on the altar with you. I mean, Elijah asked for help. He was like, he get, "Get these, get these jugs of wood." Yeah. Now, I mean, jugs of wood. Jugs of wood. <laughs> get Possible. these, get these jars of water. Yeah. And throw them on. Now throw go get on. more. Yeah. Now go get more. All right. That looks like enough. <laughs> the moat is full of water. Right? Yeah. And you know, this is so off topic, but people, other people in our lives are the ones that throw water on our wood. I know. Unintentionally, intentionally, but they, they definitely have a way of wetting the wood, especially like in your soul and in your mind where you begin to feel like that wood is too wet. Mm-hmm. It's not going to happen, mm-hmm. but stretch your tent. And That's strengthen the thing. your stakes. You're right. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen in earthly, you know, in in our humanness. Like, there's no way. You're right. There yeah. is no way. That's why it's a miracle. Because yeah. it was impossible. Like, because by all earthly standards, there's no way you're getting fire out of that wet wood. Right. That's why he wet it. And now <laughs> I suddenly, this is so, I have Whitney Houston singing, impossible like in my head <laughs> anyone saw her as the fairy godmother in cinderella with brandy in the impossible that's that song is in her torso up is floating around yes in my mind right now <laughs> it's fine it's fine <laughs> the more wet your wood is the bigger the miracle yes when the fire comes so let's all stand in faith together and believe for one another. I almost stood up just now. Let's all stand. Let's all stand. <laughs> if you have an offering, the collection boxes are in the back because we don't touch each other's things anymore. <laughs> let's all stand in faith together. Yes. I said it again. So no, let's no. all stand. No. Don't stand in your car <laughs> Don't right now. stand in your car. Don't take your <laughs> foot off of whatever you need to have it on at the moment could be the brake or the gas. Anyway, before this mouth just keeps going, <laughs> thank you for joining us. <laughs> Follow us on all the social, social, social media, social media. <laughs> Follow us on all the social medias at send help podcast. Check out our website, the send help podcast.com. Join our Facebook friend group. Yes. What is that one called? Send Help Podcast Friends. Yes. <laughs> friends, or is it Friends Go, of Send I don't Help know, Podcast. but y'all can know. search it. It'll probably come up. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so good at this. Anyway, <laughs> we love you guys. We are praying for y'all. Thank you for joining us week after week. With our mostly good stuff and sometimes craziness. Mm-hmm. We love Amen. you guys. Right. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. We will see y'all next week, except that we can't see each other over the sound waves. <laughs> it's all good. Y'all will listen to us and... Um, that's about it unless you contact us in some way and then we will read from you 
Hey, Christmas <laughs> special, maybe. Yes. yes. <laughs> Ooh, let's start planning that now. Yeah. Uh, until then, not until then, until next week. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.